Is it possible to have top class gaming below $2,000? Well, let's take a look. Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown, and I've reached 3,000 subscribers. So I would like to do my second uh, game giveaway. Um, no need uh, to do any purchasing or anything or any donations for this. Um, basically, um, I will be uh, hiding somewhere in my video uh, my little friend here, the, the geek, a uh, little picture here, and I will embed him anywhere in the video. And uh, you're just the first person to send me an email. My email address is in the, in the description below. It must be an email, not in the comments. Just send me an email of the time frame. He's actually in there. So if it's like in 10 minutes, 20 seconds, I will, uh, uh, that person will win um, uh, a game of their choice on Steam uh, up, up to a value of $50. Um, so... Good luck with that one, and as soon as someone ha has uh, has found it, I'll put a little card on the YouTube video so people uh, know going forward that it's been claimed. Um, so, without further ado, we're going to take a look at this excellent uh, laptop from uh, Acer. It's the Acer GX792-7448. It is a, uh, a high-end gaming laptop, but at a budget, affordable price. $2,000 from Micro Center. And I think uh, that is exceptional value indeed. When typically uh, laptops with a GTX 1080 in it can run up to two and a half thousand to three thousand dollars. Now, this model has a 1080p display, full HD, IPS, 75 hertz panel. You can get them configured with a 4K display. This model also has uh, a non-overclockable CPU, so an i7-700HQ and you can configure it all the way up to an i7-7820HK for $3,000. So the objective of this is not only just to give you an overview on, on how this uh, laptop performs, but how is it compared to uh, other laptops in terms of, uh, in terms of performance per dollar. Um, so we'll, um, at the end, I'll do a little comparison on how it compares to a, a laptop with a, an overclockable CPU and a GTX 1070. At 1080p, I've proven before that that is uh, very competitive, and also will compare it to um, a typical i7-7820 GTX 1080 models, just to see how that works and how it uh, how it compares to a i7-6820, an outgoing sixth generation CPU with a GTX 1080. Um, so, without uh, further ado, let's just take a quick look at uh, its design. Um, it's a, it's a very nice design indeed. Um, it's got the uh, the predator symbol on here with the decals here that light up, and there you go. That's nice. Um, it's a solid construction, no screen flex at all. It's it's, it's, it's rock solid. Uh, it has a soft surface finish on the keep uh, on the lid there and under here, and even underneath, it's got a soft uh, touch there. There, so I think that's uh, it, it's, it's very nice. Um, the keyboard does light up as well. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look at the ports. On the left hand side we have two USB ports, headphone, microphone jack and an SD card reader. You can also see the slot where the Frost Core Caddy would be in the G9 models. On the right hand side we have a USB-C Thunderbolt port, two USB 3 ports, an HDMI port, a full size display port, Ethernet jack and a Kensington lock. Now these laptops a desktop replacements really to be fair so what's it like to uh, upgrade this beast by removing two screws here you can remove this service panel here you can access the hard drive the ssd and the spare ram slots there are two open ram slots meaning this can be upgraded to 48 gigabytes the one ssd is by toshiba is an m.2 pci express nvme and the one terabyte hard drive is in a very good anti-vibration rubber caddy if you want to remove the back cover, you've got to remove 19 screws. There are also a couple of cables you've got to remove. There's this connector from there and the SATA connector from the hard drive. When you remove the back, the hard drive stays in it. The small fan here is the GPU and this larger fan is the CPU. I was quite impressed at the low sound level of these fans, particularly at load. Let's take a look. So ambient noise is about 19 decibels. There are actually three fans, the CPU, GPU and the system fan. The latter one being at the front of the laptop sucking air in. At idle, it's about 26 decibels, which is quiet, but there is a constant slight hum in the background. At load, the fans are really quiet, around about 35 decibels. 
In fact, I'd say they're probably the quietest fans I've heard at load. Here we see the speed of the fans, 3400 for the CPU and 4000 RPM for the GPU. So activating the Cooler Boost fan within the Predator Sense software, the fans do increase by about 400 RPM and volume increases to about 39 decibels. This is still very quiet when competing laptops turbo fans operate around about 50 to 59 decibels. Now continuing our tour inside we see a large two driver subwoofer. This occupies the space where the frost core caddy would be and in my opinion is the weakest part of the laptop. I'll show you what I mean. HQ CPU so it's not overclockable um, but uh, it does have the GTS 1080. As you can hear the uh, subwoofer resonates quite terribly. Lowering the volume does help a little bit um, but it's imperative that you uh, pick the right sound profile within the Adobe audio software which I'll show you shortly. At the front you'll see two large front firing speakers each with two drivers. The included Dolby Audio software has configurations for voice, gaming and music and it's important to pick the correct one as I'll show you now. First off we'll do a voice test. And today we're taking a look at the uh, Acer 17X. It is a laptop that is uh, retails for 1999, so below $2,000 and it has a GTX 1080 in it. I think that's incredible. It's priced pretty much on par to uh, a 17 inch. Switching to the music profile definitely increases the vibration in that subwoofer making the audio unclear, so definitely use the voice profile. Now we'll do a speaker test using music. The overall volume is pretty loud, around 85 decibels, pretty much on par with the GT73 VR. So let's switch sound profiles and see what differences makes. Switching profiles didn't make much difference for music, nor did it in gaming really. Um, I'd say it's good speakers for music and gaming. That being said, when you start a game, the Dolby Audio turns itself off, so the resulting audio is much quieter. You need to Alt-Tab and uh, re-enable it. Taking a look at the SSD, you'll see two more slots available, but strangely, there's nowhere to screw the SSDs into. Now, I mentioned the screen was an IPS uh, 75 Hz panel. Um, I overclocked it to 100 Hz, which is pretty sweet, to be fair. And I do like this panel. It's probably one of the best panels I, uh, I've seen. It's got excellent viewing angles, both indoors and outdoors. There's a quick look at it there. That was at zero brightness, and you can still see it. So there you go. That's 100% brightness. In fact, this is the brightest display I could, I, I've measured so far. Fantastic. And it had excellent color. Um, properties to it I did like that so it's to be fair I think it's probably one of the best displays I've, I've tried I don't know what the 4k ones like but as a 1080p this is pretty sweet it is a g-sync panel too um, so but in all my testing I disabled the uh, disabled g-sync now taking a look at the uh, the keyboard and the trackpad I did I do like that it's probably one of the uh, one of the better features the trackpad I find is a, is a nice size it's smooth it's very responsive to two-finger scrolling, pinch to zoom. The uh, mouse buttons are perhaps a little bit small, but they're easy to press, they're silent. I do like that. And there's a little button up at here at the top, which you can uh, just press to disable it when you're, you're gaming. Um, so that's a nice touch. The keyboard has no flex, rock solid. Uh, I do like that as well with the uh, colored AWSD keys and arrow keys. Um, you also have five macro keys here on the, on the left hand side uh, with a uh, top button which you can uh, switch to three different um, profiles so you can have 15 all in all so for example on the red profile um, pressing the second key will activate the cooler boost fan and that's nice you don't have to do it within the software itself now the temperatures of the chassis are also fairly cool I was quite impressed with that in fact here they are. AWSD keys 30 degrees, trackpad about 23 degrees, center of the keyboard about 34, right hand side 34 degrees as well and underneath ranging from 22 to 29 degrees. Taking a look at the software on this it's mainly Acer software. Um, you've got the Predator Sense which you use to uh, check the fan speeds and uh, the uh, speeds of the uh, GPU and the CPU. Uh, you can use it to overclock uh, the uh, GPU 
in two different settings. You've got fast and faster, and the fastest is uh, about 135 megahertz on the core and about 400 megahertz on the on the memory. So um, it's, it's a reasonable over overclock, but you can overclock it higher using uh, third-party software. Uh, also, you are able to use the software to alter the keyboard lighting in four different zones. Um, then that works uh, works nicely. Now, one problem I did have was pressing the uh, FN key. At some point in time, something strange happened. It uh, every time I press the FN key, I get uh, airplane mode activated, uh, and I was not able to, uh, you know, operate any of the function keys, the secondary uh, functions on those function keys. So that was most frustrating. Annoyingly, pressing the FN key. Bring that. Um, but other than that, the, uh, the other software on there is uh, the Acer Care, which you can uh, use to tune up uh, your PC, check the hard drive, do some kind of uh, recovery uh, tool or check the, the battery. You've got the Acer Quick Access Panel on there. Here you can access Cooler Boost, um, that's the, the, the cooling fan there, or Dust Defender, which is quite ingenious. It in, uh, instead of sucking the air in here and blowing it out, it reverses it. So it blows the uh, dust out to help uh, the maintenance cleaning there. And I think that's a very good idea. It also has a blue light shield to cut down the amount of blue light so it hurts your eyes. And you can uh, disable the USB charging. So you can charge peripheral devices with the uh, laptop powered off, and you can disable that if you so wish. Now the battery life on this, it has an 89 watt hour battery and it's not too bad really. This is it. It's got G-Sync so there's no Optimus, um, but you get uh, a good uh, three hours, 33 minutes I got uh, on uh, YouTube streaming 25% brightness or an hour 10 minutes of gaming. So that's, that's pretty standard to be fair. The webcam is a 720 webcam. In fact, uh, this is what it uh, sounds like. 720p webcam, this is what it looked and sounds like. Um, so let's um, take a look at its performance. For a GTX 1080 notebook, it is power efficient, 32 watts at idle and 216 watts at load. The CPU saves 43 watts compared to its overclockable counterpart. If power consumption is important to you, then you may want to swing for the uh, overclockable CPU and GTX 1070, saving 48 watts. I do want to show you the boot up time, hard drive speed and the impressive boot up sequence, so let's take a look. So an impressive 2 gigabytes per second read and 1.2 gigabytes per second write. And it boots up in about 17 seconds. Converting a 4 gigabyte file to MP4 using Handbrake, we see an 8% improvement using the i7-6820HK and a 10% improvement using the uh, i7-7820HK. Still, this is a great performance and the CPU stayed cool at 73 degrees. In the Cinebench, a CPU benchmark, the uh, i7-700HQ gives a respectable score of 738 points. Still, stepping up to overclockable CPUs, the i7-6820 gives 15% extra and the i7-7820 32%. Notice that the CPU remains cool at 69 degrees, but what happens if we throw in uh, a game at the same time? So I run Heaven Benchmark in the background, no turbo fan, and the CPU cranks up to 92 degrees. But still no thermal throttling, so I run it again with the turbo fan. So immediately running it again with the turbo fan activated, we see a lower score and indeed thermal throttling, getting up to 97 degrees. As we saw earlier, the turbo fan only increases the speed of the fans by 400 RPM, but they don't do a good job at keeping it cool. Passmark is good at testing the overall performance of the PC. I believe the slower CPU brings the score down here. Time Spy is a good DX12 benchmark, and the thing to take away from here is that uh, the i7-6820HK only beats it by 4%. Stepping up to the i7-7820 yields a 13% improvement. Dropping down to the GGX 1070 and uh, i7-7820, you lose 11%. Temperature still fine, 87 degrees on the CPU, 73 on the GPU. Okay, moving on to 1080p benchmarks. Competing GTX 1080 models with the overclockable CPUs generally beat it by around about 15%. Now surprisingly, the GTX 1070 model with the overclockable CPU beat it by 3%. This clearly shows that a 1080p panel bottlenecks a GTX 1080. 
Zooming in to see what the GPU percentage is, it's using around about 80%. Rainbow Six Siege is more GPU dependent, so the slower CPU doesn't have a big impact here. As you see here, the GPU usage is 99%. These large open world games like Mafia 3 are very CPU dependent at uh, 1080p. Overclocking the 7820HK yields a 30% improvement here. So Grand Theft Auto 5, another open world game that is CPU dependent. Looking at uh, other GTX 1080 models, having an overclockable CPU yields a 15-23% to improvement. Even the GTX 1070 model with the uh, i7-7820 wins by 17%. Increasing the resolution should help the Acer, which I'll show later on. Arc is a tough game to play, and the GTX 1080 does help, but really to get the most benefit out of it, you do need an overclockable CPU. An extra 17% improvement there. Having an overclockable CPU and a GTX 1070 yields pretty similar performance. Wow, look at Battlefield 1. The Acer kicks everybody's ass. I ran this a number of times and the result was consistent. Decent temperatures too. CPU at 88 degrees, GPU at 73 degrees. Tomb Raider is another graphically intensive game, so there's not much difference between its uh, GTX uh, 1080 counterparts. But the GTX 1070 with the overclockable CPU was within 9%. Zooming in, we see that the GPU usage is in the high 90s. So stepping up the resolution to 3440 by 1440, the gap closes in Metro Last Light from say 15% at 1080p down to 10%, and in Grand Theft Auto 5 from about 20% to within 7%. It's a shame this laptop doesn't come with a QHD display. This laptop is available with a 4K display, so it is good to see that you can play these games at good settings with reasonable frame rates. We get the same performance between the Acer and the MSI GT73 VR. Conclusion time. I was actually quite impressed with this laptop, and I think for 19.99 it is exceptional value. It really is. You, uh, when you compare it to other GTX uh, 1080 laptops on the market, Previous generation uh, with a 6820HK, uh, they go for about $2,500, uh, yet they only yield about 4% uh, extra performance. And if you look at the current generation, the i7-7820, that's only yielding uh, about uh, uh, you know an extra 7% performance. I'm talking 1080p gaming here, so that's, uh, that's not that much. Granted, if you're looking at some more CPU work, then it makes sense to go for an overclockable CPU, but... For gaming, it's pretty close. And if you look at uh, perhaps uh, an i7-7820 overclockable CPU with a GTX uh, 1070, now the ASUS G752VS, uh, that uh, retails for around about $2,500. So for $1999, that still represents uh, excellent value when it actually even beats it by uh, 3%. Now, if you can find a GTX 1070 model with an overclockable CPU, with a similar price range as this, perhaps slightly lower, then it might be worth considering for sure because it's at 1080p. But if you do intend to go to an external monitor and uh, crank up the resolution, then this is a good option for you. Now, I did have a couple of downsides on this. Um, the uh, subwoofer resonating was a bit of a, uh, a disappointment for me. Um, now, I did also have that uh, FN key glitch, which to be fair, may have just just happened for no reason. It started off okay, and then it uh, it went bad. I to be fair, I did contact their tech support doing an online chat. They were quick, and uh, they uh, did uh, try and uh, get me to reset the CMOS. Now underneath there is a little uh, hole which you can stick a pin in to reset the CMOS. Um, they didn't. Uh, they told me to disconnect the power, not disconnect the battery or anything. But anyway, it didn't work. Uh, but they were quick to respond, and uh, that is a good plus. Um, so take those two bad points away. It's not a good laptop. It's nicely solid, solidly built. Nice uh, touch to it, and I, I do quite like it. And I think it's good value for nineteen ninety nine. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, thumbs up if you like, and subscribe if you like to see more of my videos. Thanks again. Bye.